Good morning, and welcome to Church on the Rock. I want to thank you guys for, for joining us uh, today and coming together and, and going ahead and, and listening for the Lord's voice and what it is as He's wanting to convey to His body. So uh, thanks again for joining us, and, uh, and I look forward to, to sharing with you what the Lord has been sharing with me, and, uh, and I just hope that I can convey it properly. So let's take a moment and pray. And uh, uh, just thank the Lord. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to be your hands and feet, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for, for your word. We thank you that you've created us for such a time as this, Heavenly Father, to be your hands, to be your feet. Lord, to be your mouthpiece, Heavenly Father. Lord, and we just ask that you would help us to convey your word convey what it is that you were wanting to say heavenly father lord we invite you into this message we invite you into this word and we give you permission heavenly father to transform our minds to transform our hearts to come into unity with what it is that what you're wanting to say and what it is that you're wanting to do lord i ask that you would magnify your voice during this time Lord, I ask that you would help us to tune in to be hearing what it is that you are saying, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask for, for a manifestation of your presence during this time. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right. Well, um, here we are on this amazing, I don't even know what today is, <laughs> on this amazing day. And, uh, and, and I'm pretty excited. I'm, I'm always excited. Uh, walking with the Lord is exciting. And uh, things are ever-changing. Things are ever-changing in our world. Um, but you know what? The, the Lord remains the same. His love for us is steadfast. It's never-ending. And, and that is something to cling to. In times of uncertainty, uh, the Lord's love is never wavering. And it's never-ending. So I hope that you guys can... Take courage, uh, or be encouraged knowing that, that, that God is good. He means good, and, and He has our best interest at heart at all times. So uh, so the, the last time I got to talk to you guys, I think, was a couple weeks ago. And, and I know that I made some, some, some fairly bold statements about faith and, um, and the Lord shaking His church and given us the opportunity to be who we say we are and do the things that he says that we can do. Uh, and, and it was awesome to listen to some feedback from some of my friends and, and even some feedback from my beautiful bride. And, uh, and it, was, uh, it was very humbling. It was humbling to listen to uh, other, other opinions and other views of things. And so I feel like, uh, the Lord gave me like this little vision of like a pendulum and a couple of weeks ago I was on this side and now the pendulum has swung over to the other side and the Lord has been uh, speaking to me and he's been speaking to me I, I think I think he's given me given me a warning right now that that I'm gonna do my best to convey to you guys and and however we respond to this warning that the Lord has given us is going to determine whether or not uh, we move forward with with excitement or we move forward with discipline. And, uh, you know, we, we're going to have to be held accountable for the things that we do and the things that we say. And, and so that's very important. That's very important to walking with the Lord is to be accountable. And... Uh, you know, with, with with the times and with things that are, with the things that are going on, um, you know, w with our nation right now, and 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 again the the coronavirus and and the CDC recommendations and and the WHO recommendations and our our government recommendations and, I mean, there is just so much going on. Um, it's it's kind of difficult to follow, and and we have people on both ends of the spectrum digging their heels in. On, on whether they believe we should wear a mask or not wear a mask, wear gloves or not wear gloves, quarantine, don't quarantine. Um, you know, th there's just an awful lot going on. And uh, I I've partaken in that, uh, you know, that, that, that battle and, and trying to voice my beliefs. And, and uh, I always uh, want to err on the side of what the Lord says. And so I believe uh, that, that the Word of God 
is, is overriding of everything. And so I try to bury myself in his word and in praise and in worship and just constantly trying to seek his face and, and asking him what he thinks. And, uh, you know, I, I believe that I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. That's, that's, you know, I believe that, uh, there's nothing stronger than the blood of Jesus, that, that there's no virus, there's no illness, there's no ailment that can overcome, uh, the name Jesus and the blood of Jesus. And, and that's, that's my personal belief. And I've been doing the best that I can to convey that, especially to people that I love, but also to, to a lost world. And, um, and the, you know, so in, in my mind, I think I'm doing a fantastic thing. And over the course of the last couple of weeks, the Lord has uh, shared his heart with me. And, um, and he's bringing a little bit of correction to the way I go about uh, uh, standing up for what I believe in. And it hasn't been done perfectly. And it hasn't been done uh, with a lot of grace in certain situations. And so with that being said... Um, you know, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna go through the word of the Lord and some things that he's been sharing with me. And, and then it, it wasn't just for me. I see it also in other brothers and sisters where, uh, you know, we got people on both sides of the fence that are absolutely digging their heels in for what they believe is the truth. And that's, that's fine and dandy, but the way that we handle each other and the way that we have discussion amongst, uh, civil uh, adults, uh, it, we need to really take a close look at that. And, uh, so with that being said, the, the Lord brought me over to Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. So if you have a, if you have a Bible, I'm going to ask that you would turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12. And if you don't have a Bible, that's okay. Um, because I have my Bible and I will go ahead and, and read to you guys. Um, so now's the time to grab your notepad and your pen, uh, to begin taking some notes, if that's what you so desire. Um, so again, go ahead and turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12, and we're going to start with verse 14. And I'll be reading today out of the New Living Translation. And uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, it says, Try to live in peace with everyone, and seek to live a clean and holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. And uh, that's what I want to open up and start with. And, you know, um, we've been talking about uh, purification and, um, you know, uh, purification by fire or uh, being in the refiner's fire for the Lord to refine us. And, and, and we have uh, willingly placed ourselves in the refiner's fire for the Lord to burn out some impurities inside of us. And I believe that this is one of the impurities uh, that the Lord is allowing to rise to the top in order for him to remove the dross, remove these, uh, these unholy issues that are within us. And so I just thank you, Lord, that you've allowed us to come into the refiner's fire and you are refining in us uh, to, to, to make us a greater level of holiness, Heavenly Father. So it says, it says here, try to live in peace with everyone and seek to live a clean and holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Uh, I just want to try to live in peace with everyone. I think right now with what's going on in the world, we're not exactly uh, living in peace with everyone uh, because those who have different viewpoints than me, I tend to try to share with them. I try to convert them to what I believe. They try to convert me to what they believe. Uh, it's been turning into a mess on occasion, and, and, and that just isn't very good. So we need to try to live in peace with everyone. After that, we're going to stay here in Hebrews chapter 12, and I want to read uh, verses 5. Now we're, we're backtracking here. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 through 14. And so where I'm going with this is, is the Lord has instructed us to try and live in peace with everyone. And the Lord has begun sharing with me that if we do not do the things he's asked us to do, then he's going to have to bring forth some discipline upon us. And actually, that's the little title head right here on Hebrews chap chapter 12. It says, God's discipline proves his love. So I'm going to start uh, right here on verse 5. It says, And have you entirely forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you, his children? He said, my child, don't ignore it when the Lord disciplines you, and don't be discouraged when he corrects you. 
For the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes those he accepts as his children. It says, as you, endo- as you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Who ever heard of a child who was never disciplined? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his children after all. Since we respect our earthly fathers who disciplined us, should we not all the more cheerfully submit to the discipline of our heavenly father and live forever? For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always right and good for us because it means we will share in his holiness. No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It is painful, but afterward there will be a quiet harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. So take a new grip with your tired hands and stand firm on your shaky legs. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Then those who follow you, though they are weak and lame, will not stumble and fall, but will become strong. So, (laughs) uh, and then after that, of course, is, is 14. It says, try to live in peace with everyone. So the Lord has been sharing with me that, uh, that I haven't exactly been living peacefully while, I mean, I'm not at war or anything crazy is going on. There seems to be a little bit of turmoil or arguments about what is truth and what isn't truth. And, and, and I myself, I can't speak for everybody, but, but I myself have engaged in a few, uh, heated arguments where, where I don't feel like I represented the Lord in a way that is worthy of, of who he is. And so, Lord, I ask that you would forgive me for that right now in Jesus' name, Lord. And I ask that in the, in the discussions to come forth here in the, in the future, uh, that I would do better at representing who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. So, so after that, he says, you know, try to live with, in peace with everyone. He, he took me over to 2 Timothy chapter 2. So if, if you have your Bibles, turn with me there. To 2 Timothy chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 14 through 16. He says, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. Remind everyone of these things and command them in God's name to stop fighting over words. Such arguments are useless and they can ruin those who hear them. Work hard so that God can approve you. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly explains the word of truth. Avoid godless, foolish discussions that lead to more and more ungodliness. So that's a pretty that's a pretty firm warning. And I want to go back up here and 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 how <laughs> how important this is. You know, uh Paul is instructing Timothy here, and, and the, the, the verbiage or the language that he uses here puts so much emphasis on the strength behind what he's trying to say. It says in 14, remind everyone of these things and command them in God's name. When, when, when I'm instructing somebody and I say, hey, you command them in God's name, I am reaching out to an authority greater than myself to try to really affirm or get the point across to what I'm trying to say. So Paul tells Timothy, he says, command them in God's name to stop fighting over words. Such arguments are useless and they can ruin those who hear them. If... <clears throat> If some of the people, if some people, uh, I'm sorry to say this, but it is what it is. If some people seen some of the arguments that I had engaged myself in over the course of the last couple weeks, I mean, I myself am disappointed even, and and, and I forgive myself, but there's grace, and I know that there's going to be an opportunity to to make things right and to try to explain things with love, with grace, with humility, and with understanding. Even though we don't fully agree um, on all aspects, we can still treat each other with love of respect we can still honor one another and and we can we can walk in humility and take the position of maybe I'm not always right maybe there is some vil- validity to the things that are being stated here by the other individuals and uh you know that that man it's I'm telling you it's this these these are gentle rebukes to the body of Christ, and the Lord is going to give us ample time and opportunity to respond before bringing forth discipline. But I got a feeling that if we do not respond, uh, then then it's kind of kind of force His hand to 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 get us back in line with uh, 
with his will and, and with being his representatives here on earth. So uh, I want to jump uh, over here now to, so we're going to still stay in 2 Timothy chapter 2, but we're going to jump over to 22 through 26. And right here at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, it says, Run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Follow anything that makes you want to do right. Pursue faith and love and peace, and enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. Again, I say, don't get involved with foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. The Lord's servants must not quarrel, but they must be kind to everyone. They must be able to teach effectively and be patient with difficult people. They should gently teach those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts, and they will believe the truth. Then they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap, for they have been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. And, and when, when the Lord took me here, it really, it really struck me. It really struck me, guys. And, and, and I hope that it really, that actually, that it really, that it really strikes you. It says in 24, the Lord's, the Lord's servants must not quarrel, but they must be kind to everyone. Are we being kind to everyone when they have a different view, viewpoint than us? Um, you know, uh, in, in, in the political realm, are the people with opposing opinions or opposing thoughts, are they being kind? Are they being kind to the, to the opposition? Um, you know, it says that we must be able to teach effectively and be patient with difficult people. Now, are we dealing with difficult people in these times? I would like to think that we are. I would like to think, well, unfortunately, I don't want to think, but I know that sometimes I myself can be a difficult person to deal with. And, and when I, I, I think about how I would want somebody to treat me when I'm being a little hard-headed or being a knucklehead, I would hope that they would give me a little bit of grace and a little bit of understanding. And so I think that's what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to, to uh, treat those <laughs> as we want to be treated. Uh, it actually... It actually reminds me of, you know, the, 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 what were the two greatest commandments? You know, that there was a, there was a man that came to Jesus. He said, Lord, what are the greatest of the commandments? And Jesus said, these two, these two, the first love the Lord, your God with all your heart, mind, and strength. The second love your neighbor as yourself. And, and I'm working on that. I'm working on loving my neighbor as myself. And I'm, I'm asking, I would ask that you guys would work on that as well. Uh, <laughs> so stay away from foolish arguments. And uh, I, I think that it's wild over here in verse 22. It says, run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. When I was a youngster, I was a scrapper. Um, I didn't think twice to really uh, get into a fist fight over words for things that I thought were, were, were truth. And uh, so I, I think the Lord is sharing with me is that we need to be a little bit more mature here. <laughs> we can't just be like a two-year-old, throw a fit, scream, throw a temper tantrum, and then storm away. I mean, we, we can't do that. That's not going to get us anywhere. Uh, that, that's, not a, that's not a dialogue where two people commit and, and, and try to share <laughs> their differences of opinions and come to a conclusion. And sometimes... We have to walk away from the table and agree to disagree, but we really need to treat each other with the utmost respect, integrity, and we need to be moving forward as representatives of Christ in humility. We, we, we need to humble ourselves and, 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 and let the Lord do what he does. So uh, with that being said, uh, the Lord then took me over to Matthew chapter 5. If you can turn with me to Matthew, Matthew chapter 5. I thought I had marked this one, but I did not. But that's okay. <laughs> Matthew chapter 5, uh, verses 43 through 48. And this is, I think, is just going to uh, re-edify how the Lord uh, <laughs> thinks that we should be treating opposition. So uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48. It says, You have heard the law of Moses say, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. And that way you will be acting as two true children of your Father in heaven. 
For he gives his sunlight to both evil and good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust too. If you love only those who love you, what good is that? Even the corrupt tax collectors do that. If you are kind to only your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Those are some pretty bold statements. That I am supposed to be perfect, even in my, even as my Father in heaven is perfect. Um, I would have to say that in and of myself, that's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So as I allow Christ to manifest and flow through me, I can be as my Father in heaven is. And that is perfect. I mean, those are his words right here. These are red words. These are the words of Jesus. He says, love your neighbor <laughs> and pray, love your enemies. And, and at this time, it seems like those with different uh, belief systems are enemies. And I can't say that that's 100% fact. I can't say that they're enemies just because they believe differently than us. However, um, that there, there are some, some people out there uh, that are pretty intent on, on evil. And I think that this is a time that we need to love our enemies. And, and even those with differing opinions of us, we need to pray for them. We need to lift them up, that their eyes would be enlightened, and even for the salvation of their souls, guys. We need to take the high road here. And 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 uh, for me, sometimes that, 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 that can be a little difficult. I, I wouldn't mind getting down to the nitty gritties uh, but the Lord has called us to something better. He's called us to holiness. He's called us to purity. He's called us to humility. And he's called to take the high road. Love, love your enemies. Pray for your enemies that their eyes would be open. So, so the Lord's got me running through this thing. He, he, he gives me this little inclination of his discipline and lets me know that he disciplines those that he loves. And then he takes me over and lets me know that it's unacceptable for me to participate in meaningless arguments. Um, and then after that, he takes me over here to Matthew and starts telling me to have love for my enemies. Um, he again reminds me of his you know, top two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Secondly, love your neighbor as yourself. And then he takes me over to Leviticus chapter 26. So if you guys can, turn with me to Leviticus chapter 26. Uh, we're going to read verses uh, 14 through 16. We're absolutely going to read those. Leviticus 26 verses 14 through 16. It says, However, if you do not listen to me or obey my commands, and if you break my covenant by rejecting my laws and treating my regulations with contempt, I will punish you. You will suffer sudden terrors with wasting diseases and with burning fever, causing your eyes to fail and your life to ebb away. You will plant your crops in vain because your enemies will eat them. <laughs> That's pretty, that's pretty firm. That's actually the Lord speaking. And uh, <laughs> he says, if we do not, if I, he says, if you do not listen to me or obey my commands, and if you break my covenant by rejecting my laws and treating my regulations with contempt, I will punish you. And so again, the Lord is letting me know that uh, if I don't change the way that I engage with other individuals that have different belief systems or they are... Um, um, having a different truth than I am having, I need to treat them with the utmost respect and, and, and I need to honor them and I need to love them and I need to pray for them. And if I do not do these things, the Lord will punish me. Not because uh, he's doing it out of fear or anger or rage, because I am his child and he loves me and it is in discipline. If I don't function with self-discipline by treating my other fellow man with respect and honor, then the Lord is going to discipline me to get me back on track. So I need to practice self-discipline or experience discipline of the Lord, not because he's mad at me, because he loves me and because I'm his son and because I represent him and his kingdom. And so do you guys. You represent him and his kingdom. He loves you and we're going to play by his rules or we're going to experience the consequence. That's just the way that it is. Um, I just did I just did Leviticus 26 verses 14 through 16. When I was actually going through this, the Lord had me go all the way uh, through the whole entire chapter and 
If you want to take some time and, and just read that all the way through verse 46, then the Lord reiterates over and over and over and over and over what is going to happen if we set our hearts against what he's telling us to do. And I'm telling you right now, what he's telling us to do is treat people out there with differences of opinions, with respect, with honor, with love, and, and, and exercise humility by taking the high road. We may not agree, but that does not mean we can belittle and talk nonsense to them or about them. So after that, uh, you know, the Lord jumped me over to uh, Jeremiah chapter 17. So I'm going to turn there to Jeremiah chapter 17. If you can, uh, go ahead and turn there with me. Uh, and th this was, this was you guys hear me talk about it all the time. This was one of those kisses on the cheek that the Lord gave me, um, you know, as the Holy Spirit is kind of sharing with me where to go. Um, he, he, he usually gives me one of these little kisses and lets me know that that's right where he wants me to be. And this was one of those. So I put a little stars here on my notes and it says rods and Brittany's message, which is so cool to me. So in Jeremiah chapter 17, uh, verse one, this was the, this was the first little kiss, but this wasn't the big one. <laughs> Uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse one, it says, the Lord says, my people act as though their evil ways are laws to be obeyed, inscribed with a diamond point on their stony hearts and with an iron chisel on the corners of their altars. And, and he, the, the Holy Spirit re really highlighted the first part of the scripture. It says, my people act as though their evil ways are laws to be obeyed. And I just want you guys to think for a minute. With all of the stipulations and regulations that we have been that have been placed upon us as a people, uh, with what we can and can do, where we can gather, how many people can gather, how we gather, if our businesses can be opened, you know, none of those were ever laws. Those were all just recommendations. They were all recommendations. Not one time has one of these things put in been put into law. And so this was just a small little kiss on the cheek where the Lord says, my people act as though their evil ways are laws to be obeyed. Now, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would speak to each one of us concerning this and that you would uh, breathe life onto this and, and, and teach, teach those listening as you will in Jesus name. So this was, now that was a little kiss. Here was the big kiss, the big kiss for me anyway. Uh, it was Jeremiah chapter 17, and we're going to go five through 10. This is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans and turn their hearts away from the Lord. I want to stop right there because last week Rod talked about trust. He talked about trusting the Lord and how significant that is, how important that is to put our trust in the Lord, even though the world is shaken, even though things were, were in a time of uncertainty and we don't know what the future necessarily is going to bring or what it holds, to put our trust in the Lord. And so I just thought that that was amazing that he talked about that last week and then the Holy Spirit brought me into this and it starts out uh, about putting our trust in the Lord. Verse 6. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness and on the salty flats where nobody lives. Stop. That's what happens when we trust in ourselves, when we trust in, when we trust in our government, when we trust in our own ideolo ideologies. You know, we need to put our trust in the Lord for he loves us. He cares for us. Nothing is going to happen to us outside of him knowing. You know, think of the book of Job. You know, he went through some pretty tough situations, but in the end, you know, it, it what that was all about was the Lord believed so much in Job that he said, have you considered my servant Job? And, and, and we are no different. We were created for such a time as this. We need to trust that the Lord knows what he's doing, that he loves us, and that he's not going to lead us astray. And so if we trust in him, we have peace, we have security, we have confidence. And if we don't trust in him, it says right here that cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans and turn their hearts away from the Lord. Guys, don't turn your hearts away from the Lord. Verse seven, and this was another little part of the kiss on the cheek. I believe Brittany just talked about this a couple weeks ago and it was awesome. It was so awesome. It says, Verse 7, but blessed are those who put their trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. 
They are like trees planted along river banks, with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green, and they go right on producing delicious fruit. Number nine, the... the the human heart is most deceitful and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? But I know. I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. So guys, the Lord is continually searching us, his people, his, his, his sons and daughters. He's searching our hearts and he wants to, he, he's, he's allowing some impurities to bubble up to the top. So he can remove the dross so that we become purer, so that we become better representatives of him, so that we become holy. He says, be holy because I am holy. And this is a time where the Lord is removing unholy areas of our life so that we can be able to contain the outpouring that is, I'm telling you, that it's coming. <clears throat> I, I, I see it beginning to tip. I see, it, I see the bowl beginning to tip. And a great outpouring of the of the Lord's glory. I'm telling you right now, it, it, it's amazing, and and He has to purify us to be able to handle the the anointing that's coming. So that that there in and of itself is exciting. But that was just a little kiss on the cheek that, <clears throat> excuse me, that the Lord was talking to me about trust, and that's what Rod was talking about, and even the trees. Uh, that, that are not damaged. You know, when, when you put your trust in the Lord, we will continue to be fruitful. And that's exactly what Brittany was saying. So after that, the Lord took me to Jeremiah chapter 18. Again, this is still, I feel like the Lord is bringing some things to the surface and, uh, and he's letting us know that we need to, we need to handle some things. We need to lay some things down at the altar and walk away from them. And uh, and if we respond properly, we're going to be able to move forward with ease. And if we don't respond to this, uh, then the Lord is going to be a good father and he's going to have to take action. So uh, Jeremiah chapter 18, uh, we're going to read verses 1 through 10. The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, go down to the shop where the clay pots and jars are made. I will speak to you while you are there. So I did as he told me and found the potter working at his wheel. But the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped, so the potter squashed the jar into a lump of clay and started again. That's a pretty wild picture. <laughs> then the Lord gave me this message, O Israel, can I not do to you as this potter has done to his clay? As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. If I announce that a certain nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, but then that nation renounces its evil ways, I will not destroy it as I had planned. And if I announce that I will build up and plant a certain nation or kingdom, making it strong and great, but then the nation turns to evil and refuses to obey me, I will not bless that nation as I said that I would. And I believe this is not only a warning guys to to us as the church but i also believe that this is a warning to our nation um this is a time that we really need to be pressing into the lord um that, that we need to re be repenting for for the idol worship for placing monetary things for placing work for placing so many things above god god wants to be first and foremost in our lives and 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 with these with these scriptures right here you know we're watching kingdoms rise and we're watching kingdoms fall and 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 that's all in in the lord's hands you know if he decides to punish a nation but they repent he can relent you know, if he decides to to bless a nation and expand their borders, but they become a but they become an evil nation, he can pull back and, and make that not happen. And so, Lord, I think we just need to be in, in prayer right now. We need to be praying for our nation. We need to be praying that, 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 that we continue to lock hands with Israel, that, that the Lord would forgive us for our idol worship and help us to place him at the forefront of our lives, of our desires, and that we would continue moving forward and, and advancing his kingdom. It said, his word says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. If we seek his kingdom first, we benefit so much blessing. But if we chase the blessing without 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 going after his kingdom, we're setting ourselves up for failure, guys. It's just really important that we <laughs> we seek, seek ye first the kingdom of God. We need to put God back at the forefront of our desires and, and of our passions. And so, Lord, I just ask that you would help us to do that. 
Lord, I ask that you would help us to do that. And so these are some pretty, some pretty firm warnings that I feel like the Lord is laying out right now to the way that we handle one another in discussion, to the way that we handle each other on social media. You know, we, we, we <laughs> uh, I don't mind having face-to-face -face discussions. I get pretty passionate. But I notice uh, there's a lot of people that don't. We're, we're pretty strong when we can talk to the microphone or when we can talk behind a computer screen. But when it comes face to face, it's a little bit different. And all I'm saying is that maybe we should uh, walk in that same humility and same compassion uh, behind the keyboard and behind the microphone is that we would have face to face. Guys, we need to love our brothers and sisters uh, that have different opinions. And we even need to love our enemies that have way different opinions. Uh, that's what the word of the Lord says. Um, so, so with that warning, the Lord kind of had me backtrack uh, out of Jeremiah and then back over to Matthew again, chapter 5, 43 through 48. And it talks about having love for our enemies. And then he also had me to revisit again, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 through 16, where he gives the warning, where he gives the warning not to partake in meaningless arguments. And so I myself am being pressed into that is to not partake in meaningless arguments, but to put my hope and trust in the Lord and to know that he has my best interest at heart. And if I do these things, we're going to continue to move forward uh, in a, in a, in a quick, uh, quick like fashion. We're going to have accelerated progress. And if I don't, that can stump my growth. That's going to stump my growth, stump my growth, uh, just like in Jeremiah chapter 17. And then I will in turn have to endure the Lord's discipline out of Hebrews chapter 12. Not that he is angry at me, but because he loves me and he knows that I'm better than that. He knows that you're better than that. And so I'm just asking you guys to <laughs> treat your neighbors, love your neighbor as yourself. Guys, we got to have grace. I'm telling you to, to, to continue moving forward with what the Lord is wanting to do. It's going to require humility. It's going to require love. And it's going to, it's going to require grace. It's going to have to, we're going to have to take ourselves out of what we want and maybe put ourselves into their shoes for just a moment and, and, and try to see things from their point of view and, and, and give them a little bit of, you know, give them a little grace, give them a little love. So, uh, that's, that's what I had. That's what the Lord's been sharing with me. And I just ask that you would take a look at these scriptures and ponder them. You know, if there are areas in your life, areas in your heart that the Lord is wanting to deal with, I ask that you would just, just trust him. Just trust him. Bring him to the altar. Lay him at the foot of the cross and walk away from him. And don't pick him back up. Don't pick him back up. Um, well, guys, so, so like I said, that's what I had. Let's just take a minute and, and, and close in prayer. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for today. I thank you for my brothers and sisters. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for this word. And Lord, we understand that, that, that Pentecost is just right around the corner. A great outpouring of your spirit. I, I, think, I think, Lord, that this is, this is going to be a special time. This is a special time. This is going to be like a great outpouring V2, version 2. A great outpouring of your anointing, of your spirit, Heavenly Father. And I just ask that you would help us to be able to handle this. I ask that you would help us to purify our hearts, Heavenly Father, and make us holy as you are holy, Lord. Help us to be holy so that we can handle the anointing that you're pouring out. Lord, and we just thank you for the discipleship. We thank you for the for the great awakening. We thank you for the people that are reaching out to you right now. And Lord, we ask that, that, that when you send them, that we would be able to handle them with grace and love and with humility. Lord, that we wouldn't crush them that you love. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you would be with us as we go through this week, Lord. And we ask that you would bring to our remembrance the words that were spoken. And Lord, we just ask that you would help us to bring honor and glory to your name, Lord. Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. Help us to be an excellent representation of who you are in this world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. <laughs> well, guys, I love you. Um, I hope this encouraged you, and, and I hope that you can really stew on some of these things and, and just allow the Lord to do what he does, and that's transform us from the inside out. We love you guys. Have a great week.